You going to do it? Just do I'm going to do it. No, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. Brags in the stands. Back and better than ever, baby. Let's go. You're going to do it. Celebrate their wins the correct way. Waddle and Sylvie, ESPN 1000, don't miss it. Crazy stuff going on this week, and we're going to cover it all tonight. We got Dion Miller from ABC7 Chicago here coming up in just a little bit. She covers all things Chicago sports, including our Chicago Bears, and uh, she's going to be joining us in just a few moments. Uh, but before we do that, we want to cover a little bit of what we saw from the Matt Nagy presser today. We weren't sure, as I said, with all the craziness that's gone on from suspensions to start the week and, uh, you know, different players being hurt and all that stuff to monitor. And, uh, you know, the end of the trade deadline period, you know, was this week as well with the Bears, you know, monitoring, maybe picking up an offensive lineman with all these injuries to the offensive line. And then 
Yeah, they Maybe get Eric, Eric Cush finally by in. the end of the week. But before all that happens, him. this COVID, you know, uh, that's, you know, uh, wreaking havoc on our nation, you know, made its way into the mm-hmm. Chicago Bears locker room again. This isn't the first, you know, dust up they've had with COVID-19. And this seemed to, you know, be something that could have been more serious. Cody Whitehair uh, was the one that ended up getting it. And luckily, as they said in the press conference today, that he was wearing his mask most of the time while he was in the facility, even though he was hurt here recently and that might have, that might have prevented them from spreading it to the rest of the team. So, you know, uh but that was a trickle down effect because then Jason Spriggs and other players that were in close contact, Jermaine Jermaine Fetty. Fetty, there was just a lot of different players that looked to maybe be <laughs> out and there's like a juggling act going on on the offensive line because you have all these injuries and you have all these things going on and you know, you know, not to mention they've already had so many problems this year on the offensive line. So our you know, uh, Dion Miller, who we're having on here in a little bit, she asked Matt Nagy about this whole COVID situation, and these were his thoughts that he gave her. Matt, I'm sure a Friday afternoon practice never was so enjoyable for you after the events of the last 24 hours. Can you just tell us, like, your emotions last night when you learned that you could get back on the practice field together and kind of move forward with football? Yeah, it was great news. I mean, to be able to get that news and and hear that, that's the that was the best case scenario. So it, it – it uh, obviously puts you in a, in a much better mood than what some of the other circumstances could have been. And I think, again, it goes to the teamwork that we have with everybody here, just trying to do everything they can to, to get answers and to see where we're at. So that was the, the best case scenario. And for all of us to understand, you know, how real it is and how it can totally affect um, a practice, uh, a, a, a game, and really weeks and we, we handled it, you know, good. And now for us, it's just to continue to keep staying on top of this every single day. Pat Finn. So I thought they were doing a good job before it just kind of, I mean, now things are just really spiking in the country. So it's kind of hard to avoid just having to be out in the world. Um, And it's not like you're in a bubble situation, like the NBA was fortunate enough to do. So it exactly. just seems like it's going to be something that they're dealing with. And the NFL isn't really equipped to uh, delay games anymore. I know right. they, could, they couldn't delay this Titans game. The Titans game had already been delayed earlier in the year. I think they had a couple games maybe, or, or at least one of them. That's definitely of- the crazy part about it because look at the Packers game that was played on Thursday against the, the uh, 49ers. Both teams had a bevy of players out because of COVID-19. It's not just the Bears that are dealing with this. You know, and it's not one just the, the NFL. Yeah, one of the it's, Packers actually was COVID positive who played that game. Right. So, um, and, so, and there were players that missed prior to the game because of it. So they didn't even let them. That, that was a Thursday night game. You'd think that at least push that to Sunday or Monday. They've had games played on Tuesday this year. Why not make sure all things are safe to this point? You have these extra days. I don't understand why. They wouldn't use that to their advantage. Do the double Monday night football affair just as long as you know everyone's safe. It doesn't make much sense to me. To ma- All right, the Bears, you know, if they tested everybody, all systems go fine. They have that testing in place. The game's not till Sunday. But the Packers 49ers game, that made not too much sense to me. But then mm-hmm. again, you know, it's not an easy thing to navigate through for any of us. So They're trying to stay on schedule now, I guess. I mean, teams are having bye weeks already. The Titans already had a bye week forced on them and they play Thursday night of next week. So what are you going to do? I mean, the NF, I mean, you know, and the bottom line of the NFL is money too, regardless. So I think in a lot of other situations, maybe the bears don't get, uh, you know, approved for football activities so quickly as they did, but I think they're just, they're just going for it. Right. So, you know, the, you know, obviously this stuff, you know, hitting our offensive line couldn't have been, you know, uh, you know, Worst timed, obviously, you don't want anything like that at any loved, time. I would have loved obviously. for a bye week to get forced on us right now because right. this is one of those years that we could have used at least it's a, a mid season bye. Absolutely, a bad timing for this to hit with everything you know in the balance for the team itself. You know, and like I said, the offensive line already having its problems, and then the injuries last Sunday compounded with now 
this COVID-19, you know, uh, keep, yeah. keeping Cody Whitehair, one of your anchors here the last few years out as well. So uh, Mark Podash, who is always one to ask the tough questions in, you know, the locker room for the Chicago Bears and at Matt Nagy. And, and uh, he asked uh, Matt Nagy a fantastic question today, and I had to share it along because Matt had a really funny uh, reaction to wow. it. Mark Podash. Hey, Matt, uh, two things. Um, who do you have behind Mustafer who has played center before? And also, with such a makeshift line Sunday, how willing are you to kind of simplify the offense to just kind of make sure you establish a foundation or or knowing your DNA, is that just not going to happen? <laughs> oh, yeah. um, <laughs> only from you, Mark. Uh, um no, I mean, we, we have some guys on this team that you'll see uh, as we go here in regards to who can play center and how that goes. And um, I think that's why it's our job to make sure that we get guys prepared. Yeah, that, that's where we're at right now. And we'll do everything we can to 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 make sure that they can play fast. So uh, simplifying things and, and allowing them to play fast is something that that we'll do. Uh, and if, if there's something that's in there that's too much, then we can't do that, you know, and I think that's where it's the question and answer from us with the players and then being able to evaluate them, for instance, not having practice yesterday. Today was a long day for us because we had to catch up with some of our other stuff that we missed yesterday on the field, but they did a really good job mentally. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really in all three phases. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to simplify as much as we can so that we can play fast and play better. Thank you. He was serious. I don't think that was a joke. It just seemed like, no. he was, are you capable of that? <laughs> and you love how you love Nagy's little reaction to it. You know, he's going to start getting the tougher questions. You know, it's a, a make it or break it year. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes and, and see how Nagy responds. You saw last year how he started to crack a little bit as the season progress and as they got worse right now they're at five and three so he can laugh and and try to brush it off but you know it's gonna be money on the table time as as these games go on and i'm nervous for uh this sunday playing a tough titans team in their house and they've lost two in a row seems right. like bad timing with all the injuries we have so that's why we brought Absolutely. we wanted to bring on dion miller from abc7 chicago and like i said she covers all things chicago sports and there she is uh, you know, uh, interviewing Anthony Rizzo of the Chicago Cubs, and she joins us now. She, uh, like I said, uh, out there on the beat, working hard for all these, uh, you know, sports teams that I love. So I always appreciate your hard work. When do you think you're going to be back out there? You know, on the field, interacting with the players like that. Greg, that was going to be my first comment. Is oh my goodness, I miss being at the game. There yeah. is no energy like it and I have been to I think one Bears game this year one Monday nighter it was so bizarre and I love that they are continuing to try to make it feel normal like the announcer still goes third down you know like to get the defense going <laughs> you're like what is the point of <laughs> and the smoke when they run on the field I'm like this is so weird oh, but, man. Um, I am I am missing the locker room. I'm missing that um, connection with the players. I'm missing that candidness that I, you cannot get it over Zoom. And even uh, what you just played, Potsy's question, who who doesn't love Potash? But like, oh, man. that question, his questions when he's in front of you evoke the best answers, right? Because sometimes he says things that are just so like out of nowhere and sure. <laughs> it's that reaction that's so different. I mean, Nagy does a good job, but it's very, very hard over Zoom to kind of connect that way and for them to even know that who we are. I mean, I just feel like we're missing that personal interaction that I am just aching to get back to. Do you think that the players, you know, because they're just trying to, you know, uh, win games. It's a business to a lot of these guys. Does it, do you think it helps them focus without all the pomp and circumstance? All there isn't, you know, Bragg's yelling at them as they're coming out the tunnel. And, you know, do you think that they enjoy it secretly that they don't have the media in the locker room? They don't have the fans all over them that they can just concentrate on the game. Or do you think that they want us back there? They definitely want the fans there. They are pleased to not have the media there. <laughs> I long felt felt like this was the Bears' dream was to say we're going to keep you at home. 
length, like further than six feet. So you can't get close enough to ask us actual questions. Like, I feel like that's what they've always wanted. Um, and, and I feel like it, it, here's what I always get back to you guys. Like we all go to our jobs and we make mistakes and we walk out and we go home and we're like, all right, well, tomorrow's a new day. I, we don't have to, as soon as we, I walk off the set, I don't have a microphone in my face and a camera saying, well, why didn't X, Y, Z happen? Or why did you stumble over that word? Right. Or what? And, and that's, that is not fun like they can't be fun because you already feel awful like you're if you're competitive at all you want to be at the top of your game all the time and so that makes them that not resent the media but always almost dread it you know because we want to capital we want to not celebrate the mistake but we want to figure out what happened like that's the whole point we're there right so we want to ask you like on third down when you didn't make that tackle or you called timeout or you screwed up the play or whatever we want to ask those questions and and it's harder to do that over Zoom. That's all. right because it's like almost like you know when people get tough on Twitter. You'd rather do it face to face. It's almost a chump move. I can see that uh, feeling to like feel that way to call somebody out through Zoom because you saw it uh, last week when uh, JJ Stankovitz had asked the tough question about you know over the air what Brian Greasy said and you know Ron Rupp. Now he's in the you know chat right now. We have a lot of people in chat uh, firing questions away. And they, they, you get that a lot from Bears fans. They want the reporters to be tougher on, you know, mm-hmm. the coach. Be ask him the hard questions. Why isn't particular players on the offensive line playing better? Do you feel like you have to be a little guarded on what you ask because you yes. won't? Do you, you do really? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you've been doing this a long time. Here's what I'm gonna say. Like I, I want to ask the questions that the fans want would be asking to right because genuinely i am a fan i love the game i can i can get behind any athlete who's giving their best on the field and i have lived all over the country doing this job and i want everywhere i'm at i'm so invested because our jobs are more fun when the teams are good like it's just better if the bears are winning and the cubs and the Sox are winning and the bulls are doing well and that's it's just more fun that way but i also want to I, I also appreciate the fans that are so passionate and I argue that there are none more passionate than the Bears that they want us to not be afraid to ask the question to like say out loud to Matt Nagy hey are you going to give up play calling because something's got to give here dude and and I think they want us to ask those questions and I think in Chicago we do a pretty good job of putting their feet to the fire and making them ask questions it is it is hard sometimes because they control what we get right they tell us who we're going to talk to and they kind of control that so yeah khalil Mack can have a really bad game and if he just chooses to take the fine and not talk to us that week well he just he can Mm -hmm. and so we have to kind of adjust like there are sometimes where you sit down and you're like okay well i wasn't prepared for pat o'donnell and alex bar today right (laughs) like you, you so you how do you get those same answers from them so we have to kind of formulate our questions on the fly because it's not the same but i i will say that I have felt that Nagy's been pretty transparent over the years. Um, There've been some times where I'm like, okay, you're acting paranoid now and not as transparent as before. It's almost phony, but I get a lot of genuineness from him. And I think Mm -hmm. that that's what has endeared him quickly to bears fans and has, has made him so likable even for the players And, and to hear the players get behind him, no matter what he does, feels like he's got the attention of the room. He's a true leader for them and the, and the kind of guy that they need to take the next step. They just unfortunately don't have the quarterback to do that too. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And now he was- got, he got some love in this week too, for his handling of the yeah. COVID issue and, and people yep. were calling him kind of a, a rock for everybody and then kept, kept the ship steady. And do you get that impression from Matt that, that uh, the guys in the locker room really do respect him and he does have a good hold on this team to the fact that um, he is the right, whether he's calling plays or not, that he's the right guy to be leading this team. I really do. And and you're right about this week, really shedding a light on that in a different way. I mean, even Pagano yesterday morning was asked about Matt during this time. And he was like, he's been phenomenal. He's been calm. And I, we all make fun of the whole be you on his, <laughs> on his, his flip card. But honestly, I think he is himself. Um, I, I've said it before, so I, I hate to be a broken record. But when he was the quarterback of the Columbus Destroyers, I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was working and covering the team and went with them to the arena bowl. And I knew Matt Nagy then, and 
he is the same guy, you guys. Like, it's not, so that's why I feel like it's not fake, right? Like, it's just who he is. He knows who he is. He's mature. And and I do think hearing defensive guys say, like Khalil did today, he's like, Matt is incredible and has been incredible with this COVID stuff because he's taking a responsibility to make sure that we stay healthy and the team stays safe. And, and so I, I feel like he's able to navigate that pretty well. Now, there are times, though, this season, I think everybody would say, where you feel like there's too much on his plate with trying to right. call the plays and then trying to also be the head coach and navigate the hardest NFL season in 100 years. I mean, never. This has never happened. And so I sometimes I do feel like he's almost got too much going on, and that's maybe why some of the play calls were kind of like, wait a minute, what, what is going on here? Right. Um, so I, I will give him that caveat, but I do think he's the right head coach for right now. Do you think that he needs to give up play calling or does it, you mentioned it's the quarterbacks, but you know, he handpicked Nick Foles to come here and he hasn't looked much better. Granted the offensive line has been a problem for two years, but that's also, you know, something that he could have addressed with Ryan Pace drafting Cole Komet instead of a left tackle or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, that's what we all want to know is how do you fix this? Because, you know, to me, it's like either make the playoffs or everyone just go away because <laughs> I like them. I want them to work out, but yeah, it's like, I don't like, I don't, I'm not a half measures person. So right. now that we're like in this who knows world and a draft, this next draft next year is so pivotal to where this franchise is going to go. And can you trust these guys to evaluate the correct talent? to get this on the right tracks. So what is it? What What do you think he needs to do? Does he need to give up play calling? Uh, you know, I've thought about it a lot because I, I thought that he's got too much going on and he needs to give up play calling because some of the plays have been so elementary or foolish or just so not what, I mean, feel like you, the three of us could come up with a better game plan sometimes, right? Like we feel <laughs> like this is not, he's not, operating like he is having a grasp of what's going on in that moment or what needs to happen in that moment. And, and yet I, 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 he doesn't want to give that up yet. He feels like we're not there yet. And, and I don't know what would it look like if Bill Lazor was calling the shots. I feel like flip should be doing this. Like Di Filippo should be the one who should be calling the plays because I'm not sure where he fits in. There's so many voices in the room and they did that for, for Mitch. Right. And, sure, and now, sure. and now Mitch is injured. And so it's now Nick. And I, I know that Nagy prefers Foles. I just don't know that they're that different of quarterbacks, other than the fact that Mitch can move around a little bit more. Right. right. Both at this media, this like, I don't I mean, I grew up a Browns fan, you guys. Like we have made <laughs> careers of trying to make backup quarterback starters. And I feel like yeah. Nick and, and Mitch are both, quality backups and we're trying so hard to make them the starter. <laughs> I don't know if it's the right move, right? Uh, yeah, well, if, I if was, you have, you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Was I was really playing? hoping that Mitch was going to become that guy. And I really thought he could for a long time. I have an idea for a backup quarterback and I'm known, I uh, used to be known for making training camp videos. When I went to camp, I'd post, you know, highlights and now we can't do that anymore. And I can't even do anything anymore. Although I am going to make the trip to Nashville, but I do have an idea for backup quarterback and I want to play an old training camp highlight and see what you think of So is there that he is. Was that, that was that Matt Nagy slinging the rock. Oh, you know, you, you said know the you defender said. was going to let him make that play. You saw him. Embarrass him. <laughs> That's true. Colin, you said you you covered you him. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Did we mute her? I don't I can know. Hear you. I Maybe hear we'll it. hear her. Here, we'll remove her. We'll bring her back. Here, watch this. Can How's you that? hear us now? Can you hear us now? I can hear you, Greg. Testing. I can hear you. Hi. Oh, oh no. no. Here, hang up and then call back. Want me to call back? Yes. All right. We're going to, she's oh. going to call back. And uh, we're going to get it situated hey, live what, TV. Yeah, that's weird. But what do you think about that? You know, Matt Nagy slinging the rock. Do you think he needs to be the backup quarterback? Would they even allow that? Of course <laughs> no. not. Of course not. But, you know, I, what my question is going to be to Dion Miller is, you know, uh, you know, aside from the tongue in cheek joke with Matt Nagy coming in, you know, should Ryan Pace truly be held accountable 
for not drafting a quarterback. There we go. Here, right. Right. Here we go. It's All right. Sideways. All yeah, right. Better. All right. We're back and better than What's ever. Going on. Oh, there. Okay. I'm you, hear you're, it? you are <laughs> golden. And okay. like I said, it's live TV. We roll with the punches here at Braggs and Stands. Normally it's me screwing up, so I'll take the turn. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. So I, I'm totally comfortable with this. But yeah, that was what I was going to ask you was the backup quarterback because now that with Mitch out, they don't have a third. You know, Tyler Bray is not an option. I've seen him no. for years at camp, and Nagy jokes that you know he's been with him for eight years, so he should be ready. Like I, when I heard that, I'm like, pump the brakes, Nagy. You know he's not going to play well. Why would you say that? And to me, my question to you, Dion, is: Should Ryan Pace be held accountable for never drafting any type of quarterback? developmental or otherwise when he was the one that said he was going to draft a quarterback every, every single year. year, every year he said that. And he, yeah. had, he put all of his quarterback dreams into Mitch Trubisky. Like think about what we just, what I just said out loud. Like what? That <laughs> That's still, I I've asked many other me media members, like, is that a fireable offense? Like he's not, that doesn't, that doesn't work. And and God forbid Foles go down. Like, we all know that Nick hasn't played more than 11 games in a season, and we are dangerously running up to that number quickly. So what – and 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 he's playing behind an offensive line this week that some of them oh have God. never played that position before. Like, I, my fear is he does get taken down, and then here comes Tyler Bray. I mean, it's just it, bad to worse, right? Like, I Tyler Bray, interesting guy – not a quarterback, like a starting quarterback in the NFL. Like there's a right. reason on the practice squad. So I, I'm, I'm, I think that F Pace does need to be held accountable for that, that he isn't prepared for a moment like this, that during a pandemic season, any season, but during a pandemic season, like you got to be ready for any of those moments. And there it's, they're just not there. 100%. Right. And that's the thing. I, I kind of expect them to all, you know, at least the Bears manager to maybe give them an excuse to say, oh, it was a COVID season. Oh, we didn't have an off season and all these things. But at the same time, how do you feel good about Pace going in into another draft when you know that you're going to be looking to add an arm to this team because you have to and feel comfortable that he's the one that's going to be making that choice because he, you know, he hasn't really proven that he deserves that other chance. No, and I like Ryan a lot. And I think that there are some great things that he's done. I mean, hello, Khalil Mack plays for the Bears. Right. Still kind of, at my brain, I sometimes am like, really? <laughs> um, but at the same time, this this is the number one position that sadly in Chicago has been an issue. I mean, it, there, it, Sid Luckman should not still be uh, in the record book. <laughs> is, right. right? That's embarrassing for you. We don't have a 4,000 yard passer, I believe. Right. So right. <laughs> it's the modern right. NFL. You guys, Cutler, who I adored, was totally mediocre at best, right? And yeah. And he, he's in the record book. Like, that's just, it's not, it, that is so, they just can't seem to get it right. And the opportunity was there to get it right, and it didn't happen. And so I, I feel like that paces, uh, I guess margin at this point should be very narrow. I, I feel like Nagy has established himself as the right person, as we've already talked about. And I do feel like Pace is the one who should be feeling the heat because it's the, the roster that he built. And I remember asking him at the draft, no, at the combine this year, if it was hard because they were deciding about Mitch's fifth year option and what they were doing. And I just was like, isn't it hard to make those decisions because you built this team? Like you, how do you remove that personal element to say, no, I, I want to prove that I was right but I also know that I'm going to have to, this, this person needs to be cut. Right. So right. How, he said, it's hard. It's hard because you're personally invested because you want to prove that you made the right move. Yep. But gosh, if you're putting a square peg in a round hole, you got to stop at some point and say, yeah, hey, I, this is not, it's not working. You got to own up to that mistake yes. at some point. And he really, I mean, as, as I, I do like Ryan and I think he's made some really nice picks, especially in the mid to late rounds with some of these guys, his first round picks have been, relatively atrocious except for Roquan Smith and granted he did give away two of them um but yeah it's just you know it's it's hard to want to give him another shot at this and I feel like if you're right if anybody's on the hot seat it should be him yeah for sure. so I got I got another training camp highlight check this one over here oh yeah 
There's our guy, Riley Ridley. That is the only highlight you have of Riley Ridley the Chicago Bears. Although he did make a nice play last year against the Vikings in a regular season game. So I should say that because to me, that is, I thought that was the one thing Ryan Pace was good at was evaluating wide receivers. You know, he brought yeah. in Except Alan Robinson. He, well, who well, yeah, Kevin? Hey, who? that's not, yeah. Hey, who? he's a, I feel bad for him because he got injured so many times, but yes, that was a definite miss. So, uh, but aside from that, I like these other guys. I liked Anthony Miller when they got him. I like Javon Wims. I thought Riley Ridley looked good at camp, even though we've never seen him. And I'll have guys like uh, little Kevin in the chat. One time we were getting into it. I'm like, Riley Ridley can play. And he's like, oh, he's citing all his stats. And I'm like, he's never played. Right. So this week we're finally going to get an opportunity to see Riley Ridley. Do you think that he'll get any significant snaps or an opportunity to make a play this Sunday? Gosh, I hope so. I mean, I feel like he he has the talent to show more than we've seen. It's just because he hasn't had the opportunity. But now I the, agree. the biggest question mark is how connected is he with Foles? Um, and, and how much time is Nick going to have to look downfield for anybody? I'm very nervous about this. Yeah. I mean, the other day when we were at practice and I'm looking at this offensive line, I was like, oh my gosh, they need name tags. Like, I don't know who they are. And, and <laughs> that's scary because that's where they need to have that solidifying in front of Nick, who, when they, when they had the starting five at the beginning of the season and they were healthy, he was already, I mean, you guys heard it. He was already saying, I don't have time to run that play. Like he, he, he isn't, he isn't mobile. So if these guys get, and not that Tennessee has this like grand glorious pass rush, but I don't know that you have to against guys that they're putting out there right now. So right. hopefully Ridley will get an opportunity to show that he can do more than they've allowed him to do at this point. I hope that that happens this Sunday too. Do you Absolutely. think that just, just to kind of go back for a second, do you think that ahead of the season, Nagy knew that he was going to give Mitch just a couple games and he wanted him out. Do you think that was, that was his plan all along? I do. I feel like you don't trade for a guy like Nick Foles and pay him the amount of money you're going to pay him to literally hold a clipboard. I mean, it, yeah, in a dream world, Mitch takes a step that none of us saw and they regret mm -hmm. not picking up that fifth year and he suddenly gets paid and it becomes this like, he becomes the savior of the Bears franchise. I tried but to will that into existence. It didn't work. He, he tried as hard as he could. I tried. I tried yelling at Waddle and Sylvie every day this summer to make it work, and it did not work. I apologize. No, it's very sad. Very sad. But I love that too. But but I feel like they brought in Foles because it was the guy that that Matt wanted, right? So I feel right. like this is the quarterback he prefers. Can Nick do everything he wants him to do? No. But Mitch couldn't either. This is what we just got back to, right? Like, he's he's a great guy, great team guy. I think that everybody likes him. Mitch likes him. Everybody likes Wolves. Sure. But can he can he be the, the guy? Can he be that quarterback? And I just don't know that that's happening. To me, it's not the quarterback. To me, it's not a quarterback issue. I'm the guy known for saying it's not all on Mitch all of last year. And now it's not all on Foles is to me. It's an offensive line issue compounded with a play caller that now doesn't know how to call plays because of his offensive line. Yeah. And that's yeah. not a cop out to Matt Nagy. It's just to me, when I hear him say things like last year, you know, uh, I, four yards, three yards. I'm not an idiot. I see what's going on. That's him trying to say, I try to run it and nothing happens this year. He's trying to stick to it and still nothing's happening. So you can argue scheme, but at the end of the day, these guys aren't physical enough. It feels like, so I, I, I wish they could just get an offensive line. So then we could see if Matt Nagy could actually, you know, run this offense. That's what scares me is, you know, bringing these guys in in the off season and then and next year it not working out as we extend forward. But that's, you know, I want this team to make the playoffs this year to me. What do you think? Do you think if they do not make the playoffs starting at five and one, that mm -hmm. do you think Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace retain their jobs? And if they don't, if they do not make the playoffs, I think Nagy does. I mean, gosh, I, what were we talking about this morning? Oh, I wasn't talking about it. I was listening to somebody talk about it, but I, I like my brain started going. Like, sure. If they stay in the playoffs and make it easier to get in, isn't it worse if they miss, especially if they started at five and one? So 
I, I feel like Pace is the one who's going to feel the heat more than Nagy. Truly, I believe it. I think Nagy's back. I, I think they all, from top to bottom, everybody likes him in that building. Are Pace um, and Nagy a package deal? I don't think so. Really? Oh, so, no. Mm -mm. I mean, okay. I, I think they're like cut from the same cloth and you feel like they're... They don't. You see them at Bears 100, you think they're like brothers. Their contracts are tied together and all that they stuff. Are, but I yeah. think they did that on purpose, right? So that they could make that change if they needed to. I just, I feel like they would make a move with Pace before they would with Nagy. But, sure. but I, don't I know. hope that's true. I he was 10 and 6. I can't, I'm still mad about that. <laughs> Here, I, I got that, And that's one of those situations that you don't know. I mean, you do fire Ryan and then you bring in the GM and then the GM decides, hey, I, you know what? Matt's not my guy. And then you get in that same situation again. Yeah. So that's a tough, that's a tough position as well. It is. So uh, I got a funny picture for you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> With Don, the bear man. Don's our guy. Uh, I was hoping he was going to go to the Bears game this Sunday, but he's uh, going to be at a wedding. But you got to wear the bear man head. Is that the coolest thing ever? It's very it's cool. One of my favorite stories of all time because he's just such a great personality. I Here. adore him very much. Yes. Yes. He's, he's a sweet man. He's just, he is a sweet man, but he's just, his energy is like, oh, I mean, it's he, off the chart. He is the best. They, uh, you know, he's with the Chicago Bears tailgating club and I tailgate with these guys all the time and I'm good friends with a few of them for a long time. And you know, back, you know, in our old lives, when we tailgate at the corner of Wabash and Cermak before games, he is amazing to be around and he's become a great friend of mine. And uh, like I said, he's not going to be there, but his good buddy, Paul, the road warrior who, you know, yeah. you guys, a lot of everybody was doing, you know, stories on because these guys have been going to games for 400 straight games since the eight early eighties. They have not missed a home game, which is like kind of crazy to think about, you know? So what are your thoughts about, you know, fans in the stands this Sunday, you know, especially with everything going on with the bears, you know, for me, I am going to be there. I got tested. I'm going to drive. I'm staying at a family. I've taken a million precautions. I'm going to wear two masks, you know, but to me, it's my one opportunity to see a game. Where are your thoughts as far as, you know, it, you know, a stadiums attempting to socially distant fan put socially distance fans in the stands. And as it pertains to, you know, the bears may be trying that. You know, there have been times with college football where I've actually like cringed and been like, oh my gosh, why are there so many people so close together? And right. And and that worries me because obviously, I mean, it's so much better with fans in the stands, but it's also much more dangerous right now. And so I, I feel like the numbers in, in our state are not helpful right now. Like they don't feel, it doesn't feel good about the Bears chances of having anybody in the stands at all this year. Sure. But I understand, I understand wanting to go. I understand wanting to try. And I mean, like, like I talked about my Browns fans, like they, they are letting some fans into this, into the stadium to watch. And I, I think that you, we have to understand that that's a risk that we're just taking. I mean, yep. uh, what makes me sad is that I feel like teams are really charging a lot to, uh, uh, have people pay to put themselves at risk, which that bothers me. That will always bother me, but that's the, that's the NFL, right? Like they, mm -hmm. why we pay obscene amounts to go to a preseason game. That doesn't matter, but they know right. that we will. And so they charge too much. I feel like because of the fans are what makes this league so great. Like why not make it better for them? Especially right. in 20. I mean, I just, I don't, I, that's hard for me. Yeah, it's tough for me as someone, you know, this brags on the stands. I, this is what I pride myself going to the games. I haven't been to a game since March 10th. Not that I'm counting. And <laughs> it's like, so I'm seeing all these other games with all these fans going. And I, yeah, I, I totally respect what's going on. My wife's a nurse. So I see her deal with this every day at the same time. You know, we went to the zoo, uh, uh, Brookfield zoo a couple weeks ago. It's outside everyone. There's there were people there, but everyone's kind of keeping their distance, keeping respectful. I feel like if it can be done smartly and that is the operative word, if it can be done properly, you know, you know, with Apparently. right procedures and, and things like that, it's outdoors. I wish it could be done. So I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how Nashville puts it on. It's yeah. going to be my one game for the year and that's going to be it. And I'm going to do everything I can to stay separate from everybody. But, you know, do you think, you know, being, you know, we showed the video earlier of you interviewing Anthony Rizzo. What do you think the chances of, Cubs fans being in the stands oh. for opening day, you oh. know, for the Cubs next season. Man, I don't know. I mean, I I love 
baseball. I love Wrigley Field. I, I mean, I love both ballparks in our city, but there's just something different about Wrigley. And it's one of my favorite places to be, favorite places to, to be doing a game and to be with the fans. And to not have them there is really, um, it makes me sad. And and yeah. I hope that by by the start of the baseball season, hopefully it starts on time. And I hope that we have a vaccine of some sort um, that would allow some fans to be there because it's just, I, I feel like the Cubs did a good job that both teams did a good job this year of like generating their own energy in the, in the clubhouse. But even, even they would say it's just not the same. And, and I, I am hopeful, like literally prayerful that they, that we'll be able to have fans back in the stands because it is more fun that way for everybody. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's what it's for. And, and it provides such an, outlet for people um mm -hmm. that I, I worry about the numbers in our state and i'm just dreading someone saying the words stay at home shelter in place like, yeah i don't la, 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 la. like i don't want to hear it right i want people to be safe and um, right and so yeah. well we're all in this together and we got to get through it and hopefully you know it it's over faster than you know we <laughs> than it feels like because it feels like it's never gonna end mm -hmm. you know we did have a couple questions in the chat brandon wanted to know you know you have been covering Chicago sports for decades. And, and, and I have always appreciated your coverage, but I would love to know. And Brandon wanted to know who is your favorite person you've ever covered or that kind of kept you, that had you in awe when you were covering them or um, interviewing them, I should say. Uh, two guys, same team, uh, LeBron James, when I was in Cleveland, I did um, four seasons covering the Cavaliers I will caveat that by saying two years before the decision and then two years after the decision. So starkly different teams, but LeBron always had me in awe on the court. And when you interviewed him and Shaquille O'Neal, do you remember that Cavs team that had like Antoine Jameson yes. and, mm -hmm. and uh, Naples uh, or Naperville's own uh, Anthony Parker and right. Yeah. And yes. Mush. My, my, my head like I can't hardly remember but that team was so fun to cover and Shaq was such a big personality um he was one that you like that was like an appointment interview right like anytime you got a chance to talk to him you just you laugh and it was fun and it was it was just good energy so those two always had me in awe always so what's it like navigating through you know being you know, reporter in, in doing sports media in such a male dominated industry, especially in Chicago, you know, we've seen a few dust ups here recently between Chicago media people. And, you know, I always seem to think about, you know, what it's like for you guys and how have you been able to kind of maneuver through this, you know, especially in Chicago where it feels like it's dwindling, dwindling away. You know, we had Sarah Spain and a few girls that were up and coming and now it seems like it's nobody. It just seems very male dominated. You know, what advice would you give to, you know, a, a woman or a girl watching right now that's trying to come up in this industry? You know, it, it, when I first started, I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but when I first started in the business, I felt like we were way more of a minority than we are now. I feel like there are a lot of very incredible journalists, women journalists who are in the industry. That's it's like, they are raising the bar all the time. When I arrived in Chicago, it was like Peggy Kaczynski and Megan Mawicki. Those were like the two that right. came in. And I was like, if I could be like that, that would be awesome. And I've been given the opportunity to keep going. And now I feel like I'm kind of the old one. Like, I, I feel like there aren't a lot of women. You're right. And it's, it is challenging. I think that the number one thing that I have worked very hard to do is to make sure that I'm prepared um, to like watch and respect the guys who've been here a long time and then kind of find the right moments to ask the right questions and to kind of advance the story that they're working on to and earn that respect that way. It is, it's a challenge. I feel like women always have to know just a little bit more than the men need to know. I, the men know a ton. They can remember all the things, but I feel like if, if I show up and somebody says something to me and I don't know what they're talking about, like, I think it's going to, it's going to reflect badly. They're, they're going to know. And even if I don't use the information, you guys, I have so many needless stats in my head, but <laughs> like, I mean, needless, but I, I feel like if I don't know that, then I'm not going to be calm and prepared when I'm doing a story or even doing a live shot with Gian Greco because he knows everything. And so <laughs> he'll say something and, and I want to make sure that I'm right there lock and step with him. And so a lot of, I, I feel like the hardest part of my job has always been the research has always been doing it to the preparation. The easy part is when you're on TV, the, the hard part is 
preparing and understanding. And when I moved here, I didn't grow up here. Okay. So I had to read the books about the 85 bears and I had to figure out what the history was because it meant so much to the fans. And then suddenly it, it meant something to me. Like I wanted to make sure that I understood why everybody loves these teams so much and why they love this city so much and what makes Chicago such a great sports city. And it is like the best. And so I wanted to make sure that I fit into that and, and help bring the viewer closer to the teams that they love. And so doing the research was the biggest part of kind of navigating that in this city and then observing and watching and watching the legends, you guys, like yep. Patsy, um, David Haw and Bruce Levine and guys, I mean, they've been Bruce. in Schuster, <laughs> Dave Schuster. Like these are guys that have less grob seen. I mean, like these are people who've been here for a really long time and kind of watching how they work and watching how they navigate the rooms and then kind of complimenting that in the best way that I could. That was the best advice that I could give because the story is not about me. It is about the athletes that the fans at home want to hear from them. They don't want to hear my voice. They want to hear from them. And so how do I bridge that gap in a way that they almost forget who I am and feel like they're closer to the game? That's the goal every time. That's so you do advice. a fan. Yeah. You do a fantastic job and you've become a Chicago sports staple as far in my eyes, as far as Chicago media is mm -hmm. concerned. So we were excited to bring you on, Absolutely. you know, we were going to bring you on a couple weeks ago, but it was your birthday. So we want to give you an official happy birthday, happy birthday. here Thanks. at Braggs in the stands. And maybe before you go, if you don't mind, before we let you jet, if you wouldn't mind giving us a station ID, we'd love to have one okay. for the show. So we'll, we'll put you on the solo shot here. Jake will line you up. And all you got to say is, you know, your name and what you do. And, and you're listening to Brags in the Stands. You got it. All right, here we go. I'll all right. Countdown in three, right. two. I'm Dion Miller from ABC7, and you're listening to Brags in the Stands. Beautiful. Perfect. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. You know, uh, this was so fun. You like kicked off my weekend. Although, yeah, it's, it's great. Wednesday. It's my Wednesday because I work the weekend. So. That's right. Hey, that's right. And most people are working for the weekend, and then you're going to be working hard for us on the weekend. Right. And we're excited for the game. I'm like I said, I'm going to be down there. Hopefully, the Bears can get a win. And what is your uh, game or final score prediction for our beloved mm -hmm. Bears here this Sunday versus the Titans in Nashville? I wanted to pick them so <laughs> um, and I just can't do it. I feel yeah. like 2117 Titans, something to that effect. Oh, that's still pretty generous. Whoops. It's, I mean, I it is 17. I don't know if they can score. Yeah, I was going to say. I just realized, as I said, it, how generous that was. Were you there last time they were in Nashville, Greg? No, and man, that's one of my greatest regrets because, you know, that to me is one of the greatest – single games you know it didn't have any meaning because of playoff implication or anything like that but peanut tillman had four yeah. peanut punches in that game devin hester had uh almost a kick return for a touchdown it got returned to like the two and i'm a devin hester you know, i can tell you every step footstep he took in a bears uniform at camp, <laughs> camp or otherwise sure. and uh they had like four touchdowns it was 35 to nothing. Had a pick six game, yes too, right? it was 28 to nothing by the end of the first quarter it was the greatest bears game i have ever seen individually and no we didn't jake and i didn't go and i heard they uh they drank the town out and all the light beer was gone so i i, was, I, I helped our fan base drink the city <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh man um, but I will never forget that game either. It was like a moment. It was just, it was, I mean, like I can still picture it. It was a beautiful day. We were, I mean, like, I, it was so, it's so vivid in my brain. that. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be a huge pillaging moment, this yeah. game, because it's such, it's in the middle of the country and so many Bears fans do travel well. Yes. And they're not just from Chicago. Bears fans are from everywhere. We got, you know, so many in the chat firing away at, you know, loving the interview and, you know, that's, that's what's so funny about it is, is just, uh, this Sunday, not being able to, you know, embrace that with more bears fans. You know, I'm not going to be going out to the bars or anything like that. I'm strictly going for the game and coming home. So it will be surreal to think that, you know, you're not going to actually experience Nashville for what it is. But, uh, again, Dion really appreciate your time. You and so we'd love to bring you on again here as the season progresses and maybe the bears can sneak in the back door of the playoffs and we can talk about some playoff football here the next time we bring you on. What do you think? If you don't call me 
if they make the playoffs, I will be offended. <laughs> well, hey, you're 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 gonna we'll be bugging you again here at Braggs in the stands, and we thank you very much. It was a really wonderful interview, and uh, can't thank you enough for all your time and all the hard work you do for all the Chicago sports teams that I love and follow. Well, bless you guys for having me on. It was a blast. Have a great all night. right. Thank you so yeah, much. Bear down. All right, Dion Miller. Awesome. ABC seven Chicago a great interview. And that's the yeah. one thing I did notice when she, I mean, she's just, she's super quick with all these, all this knowledge and stats and that she, you can definitely tell she does put in the time to do that research. And she's definitely a Chicago staple at this point. So she's, earned, per- she's earned that ranking hundred percent, hundred percent. So before we get into, uh, you know, our guy, of course, I did want to do, you know, we'll save the, the John boy for the end, but we got to get my fan bags boy. And we got to do our little promo that we always do here. And that's that time where Jake pulls up some nice, soft music and we start swaying. Yep. And then I try to hit the music. Wait, uh, I, you like this one, right? Okay. So, like the chill one. okay, there we go. Okay. Little change up little change up there this is my guy fan bags cornhole you know you got to make sure you get these because the christmas season is fast approaching and i'll tell you what that Dion miller of abc7 chicago interview was brought to you by fan bags cornhole chicago's official supplier of professional cornhole boards and bags Choose from any of their officially licensed designs or have my boy Brian design a custom set using anything from a selfie to your company's logo. Visit www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS to get 10% off your entire order. That's www.fanbagscornhole.com and use the promo code BRAGS for 10% off. Step up your game with Fanbags Cornhole. Cornhole. You always have to make sure that you say cornhole. It's your favorite part. Sandlin's giving the thumbs up. I did a better job. Or maybe Perfect. he's giving a thumbs up to the interview with Dion yeah, Miller, but I'm going to intercept that interview. thumbs up because scared. I like taking credit for things. So there you go. Make sure you get your fan bags. You know, my guy, Brian, he makes really nice uh, custom boards and uh, they're on the professional circuit. So they're the real deal. Holy field of bags, bean bags. So why don't you go ahead and get some for uh, your Christmas present to your dad or your you mom the garage, or your even kids. It's snowy and cold. Just yes. Do or you, I shovel my grass. We'll be covering that as the winter progresses, Jake. So you can I always can't. throw bags in my yard because I shovel my lawn. I'm, I I don't have a lawn right now. Because I'm a human home. would do, of course. Yes, I am homeless. But like I said, before we, uh, you know, uh, no, we're going to just bring on Johnny B because I keep saying before we're we going to bring on Johnny before, B, yeah. but we're going to bring on Johnny B because it wouldn't be nice to have him wait any longer for Walk all, before. all his, uh, you know, fans out there. You know, he, every week he comes on here and, and gives away picks to help you make money. And that's what he does. He's, I already know his record you know, speaks for itself here. And that's why his fan base is rapidly growing along with his infamous duck races that we debuted last week. I believe my my weeks are starting, starting to mold together, but Johnny B got to not, you know, like I said, he's not only our gambling aficionado, but he got to go to the game this Sunday. He beat me to the punch. I'm going this Sunday, but last Sunday, he got to be in the stands with his Chiefs brethren, wearing the masks, socially distanced. There is his lovely wife, and they're hanging out there in the stands. They got the heart shades. I love those heart shades. And uh, so, Johnny B, how those was heart shades are as famous as duck races in Kansas City, those heart shades. Those things have yeah, yeah. been over every TV broadcast, coast to coast. So Johnny, how was it in the stands? What was the protocol like and how, how was everything? What was your experience like at the game? Well, first of all, it was great to be back in the stands uh, to see the boys live. Uh, the last game I attended for a football game and the last Chiefs game was Super Bowl 54. So mm-hmm. in a minute, mm-hmm. I got to see the boys, but you know what? It was a little bit weird. You know, you're used to coming into Arrowhead. People start coming in there like 5, 6 a.m. in the morning to start the tailgating. You know, and they did allow uh, some tailgating, but everything with the, you 
you know, the limited capacity and everything. So it was a little bit strange. Safety wise, I felt like it was 1 million percent safe. Um, they had these different zones and stuff. And obviously you had to wear your mask and, and they had it done right. And then the seats that were not available to sit in were with the heavy duty zip ties. So even if you wanted to try to sit in those seats, you wouldn't be able to open the seats. So they did a good job. So people couldn't sneak and maybe like, Oh, there's my friend from whatever. And so they did a really good job. I felt like it was super, super safe. The weather was great. And it was good to see. What was it? I, I lost count. I think it was five touchdown five. passes. <laughs> I think it was five. I can't remember. Well, we've you've got the right some game of to go to where you know you're well, definitely you know you're gonna have a comfortable dub and you get to just well, enjoy yourself. Well, we've got some of these Johnny B shots in the stands, and uh, we'll show some of these here. This is There it is. So that's Tyreek Hill. Yeah, that's Ryan. basically the Chiefs red zone, which is 40 yards and in. That's oh, the, oh, the Chiefs red zone. When they so when they enter <laughs> through the past the 40 yeah. yard line I, on fantasy football, the, it should light up red that they're Correct. in the red right. zone. Like red zone. Immediately go to red zone. Yeah, 40 yard line, 38 yard line. You know, that's the red zone for the Chiefs. So if the Bears, then what should their red zone be? If the Chiefs is the 40 six, yard line, six, five yard line, six yard line, yeah. I'll give it six. six. Hey, yeah. we have trouble it's on the six. six. Line, it, typically, there. we're better at like the 12 or the 14. If we get that close, then we start thinking about running it, and then that never works either. We're on the three yard line, we'll run it on second down. We'll just tell the offensive us. lineman if it gets a little bit too close to either hold or do a false start, then you get a little bit more room. You see, right? Yeah. Sure. So here's the other uh, shot you had from the stands, you know, doing your, your best brags technique here. And I love it. We love you, Patrick. I like that a little. I love you, Patrick. That's what I was just about to say. The nice shovel pass for a touchdown, but we have to. uh, We love you, Patrick. You say it. You know. (laughs) Is that you, Johnny? Yeah, that's me. That's me. We love you, Patrick. The the reason I say it in that voice is because, like, I had already seen Mahomes in uh, when he became the starter, the first opening game. I went out to LA at the soccer stadium to watch him play. And I looked at Abs and I said, Holy shit, we're going to the Super Bowl like 10 minutes into the game in 2018. So then we went to the home opener a couple weeks later, and there was a guy sitting behind me, and he's not, I think one of his friends has the tickets. And then he kept saying it in that voice, like the whole game. I love you, Patrick. Patrick. So then we started saying it. So now, obviously, we go through 2018. We don't quite get to the Super Bowl, but he gets the MVP. And now we win the Super Bowl in 19. So it's kind of become a tradition that we say, I love you, Patrick. Well, I'm going to have to cut. We love you, Patrick. I yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, I, like I, I that I'm going to have to cut that a little bit because it's the end where you, I love you, Patrick. Yeah, you know, you kind of hold it. You know, so I meant the reason I was stuttering at the beginning when I was introducing you was because I meant to play this to introduce the first you. time together, Arrowhead Stadium, home of the Chiefs as world champ, world champion, champion. I gotta say, it feels great because we are now the team that everybody hates. Everybody wants us to lose. I love it. Like they say, we suck. And they can't stand us. Yeah, I mean, so, Johnny, <laughs> when did you guys become the team everyone hates? That's really? what I don't get. Where are you it getting this bad. from? It is bad on Twitter. Like, you know, we, we can, like, run the ball because they were is doing – Chubbs? Are you listening to Chubbs too much? No, no, Chubbs is good. You know, he has his team. He's a very knowledgeable football guy, no he doubt. Is. He's called some nice uh, upsets this year. But, you know, it's like – they play two safeties back, and then we run the ball, and then they say Mahomes can't throw anymore. And, and you know, we're just reading the defense. So, like, everybody hates they say Mahomes is a system quarterback. You should see the stuff I get in my Twitter. It's hilarious. 
Man. Oh, boy, getting the Tom Brady treatment already. I mean, it's only been one Super Bowl, and they're already started. The Ravens fans are the worst because they um, can't beat Mahomes. Lamar is 0-3. The last time on Monday Night Football this year was a beatdown. They're the worst. The- well, our, our guy Pete. Lamar's got the Madden got curse. Everybody, I thought I thought we had broken that with a few other few guys, but Lamar's picked it right back up. Yeah, our, our our guy Pete, you know, uh, Pistol Pete, the Panther Pete, you know, he has a disdain for Tom Brady because of 20 years of dealing with him. You know, we're in the early stages of Mahomes. I don't think anyone other than Bears fans, and I don't even think most Bears fans hate what the Chiefs and Mahomes do because no, I, I think most Bears Pace. fans are mad at Ryan Pace and Mitch Trubisky and Matt Nagy for not, for not seeing the light or whatever, blaming Mitch for being drafted over Mahomes or whatever. The rest of the NFL, I don't know how much hatred around the league, but I'm also not a Chiefs fan, so I don't know. Maybe you're right, but I, I, I like – I'm happy for you, Johnny, because I know you're like me. You're a guy that loves to be at the game, in the environment, in the moment, feel that energy – and, uh, you know, for you to see a big win and then throw five touchdowns couldn't happen to a better guy. You know, you're always helping everybody out. You help us out here at Braggs and Stands. You help out our listeners making money from the couch. So you got to see a win. So now that means without further ado, let's get Please. some dubs this week for Johnny B for three. Johnny B for three. Where's All day music? long. Well, Where's that music? Do we have any music? Here oh, it. Music. There it is. I'm going to mute up. There it is. Well, as you know, COVID-19 is pissing me off because, like, you never know who's going to play. I mean, I have no idea who's going to play. Like, they're going to play, then they're not, but they're next to this guy, and they talk to this guy who knew this guy, and then you don't know, and then they're like, he's going to play. So it's been a little rough. We're 12 and 12 on the show, but don't forget these picks are coming out on Thursday. And Friday, so that's a little tough. But for the game day picks, we're nine and two, including um, the uh, prop bet that I gave away to some people on Twitter. Le'Veon Bell over eleven point five receiving yards last week, and he did that pretty much on the first catch. So without f- further ado, our overall record is twelve and twelve for the show. As I said, in nine and two, I don't have that added together, but that's still pretty good. And we're gonna get it going here and beat this COVID nineteen. So let's get into it. Johnny B for three, number one pick, Seahawk, Mister Unlimited. I know he almost choked a couple weeks ago, but he's not gonna choke this week. DK Metcalf lighting it up. I like the Seahawks minus two point five at number twenty four. Number two, we're going to do a little tease. As you know, the teases sometimes are necessary with the big spreads. We're going to take those red-hot Kansas City Chiefs. I believe Mahomes can pass Marino for the quickest games to 100 TD passes with three. We'll take the Chiefs at minus four, and we'll take Kyle at plus three. Put those together for a minus 128. And the number three pick, that Lamar action Jackson didn't look so good last week against that big Pittsburgh defense. But you know what? I like him this week. I'm going to take the Ravens at minus one, at minus 117. And those are this week, John and B for three. All right. Nicely done. Nicely done. And then I'll have a game day pick Sunday morning as I always do. It'll be kind of cool because Greg will be – at the stadium like I was last week. He'll be all hyped up like I was feeling it. And um, I'm going to try to find a prop bet, too. Those prop bets sometimes don't post until tomorrow. So I don't have a prop bet necessarily for right now, but I'm going to try to do a prop bet similar to what I did last week. We gonna well, I'm excited it. for that. And, yes, we will. We're going to do a little pregame coverage, you know, while I'm in the stands. But once I get in the game and in the stadium – you know, two hours before kickoff, we'll try to go live and we'll share with you Johnny B's game day pick that he likes to give out because he's so gracious enough, along with his Johnny B for three picks that he gives you every Friday night here at Braggs of the Stands. And uh, you always do such a great job, Johnny B. So I'm not as excited. Uh, the, I'm, I'm excited to go and I'm grateful that I get to see a game, but I don't know if I'm uh, I'm a little worried about how the outcome of the Bears are going to go. So. Well- I got to say, Greg, this is something you may not know. You know, the, your guest that was just on, I'm, oh, my God, light up the sky with the smile. But the knowledge with the smile, I mean, boom, my brain is just blown. But yeah, I was yeah. at the Bears game in Nashville that you didn't go to. I was there yeah. when Peanut really? Pullman punched the ball out. 
Some of my friends went and Chicago took over the town. I mean, the drinks were flowing like the Nile River. I'm telling you, down, downtown Nashville, it was crazy. And there's a rumor, the story, urban legend, that I believe the owner's name at that time was Bud Adams, and he has passed away since then. But yes. originally, the Tennessee Titans were the Houston Oilers, and there's a rumor that the Bears put the beat down so bad on them that he left at halftime on his private jet and did not come back the rest of the week. Wow. Yeah, well, I do that- remember. I always remember that game because at the end of it, they talked about – I think it might have been Bud Adams or somebody said uh, that they were outplayed, outcoached, outclassed, and they gave this incredible uh, – just like glowing, you know, phrasing about the bears. And we don't hear that stuff like ever. So I, I always, that always just embeds in my brain of just re- feeling like, wow, the bears are like actually making it. They're, they're, they're turning into this team that we've always wanted and didn't end up going anywhere that year. But that game was something I always, yeah, it, was, it was really nice weather the whole time. Chicago took it over. The chiefs were on a buy and some people said, Hey, do you want to go hang out? And I love football. Everybody knows that I'm going to a game. Sure. And, you know, if I can't go to my game, I'm probably going to go to a game if the option is available. So I said, That's Hey, right. drive up there. No problem. Hang out, have a good time and all the honky tonks the night before, but I'll never forget this. I'm going to say, 60 70 percent bears fans that day when peanut popped that punch out that first one which was really early in the game i mean my my sister was in california watching on tv and she said it sounded like a home game like that's how loud the fans were when he popped that ball and then obviously that number 54 pick six brian's pick six was pretty amazing too Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of big plays in that game but it was a fun day yeah Yeah. you get something just out of nowhere that just is great yeah, four peanut punches in one game, and each one was, you know, kind of just amazing in its own way and kind of encapsulated who Peanut Tillman was as a player. And to me, one of the greatest single game displays by an individual player ever. I meant to say that with Deion Miller, too. It wasn't just the team's performance in the first quarter. Peanut Tillman in that game, you could put that his performance in that game in the hall of fame. It was that rare and special to have four peanut punches in one game like that. And like the last one I'll never forget was like the Thor hammer. He just brought it down on the guy. And each time you're like, you couldn't believe the player left the ball out there right in front of him. They never learned it. You know, he, he was so ahead of his time with that, that players just hadn't figured out where to keep it away from him. Cause he was just a danger to punch it out at any moment. So well, he does, uh, does have those incredibly long arms. And it's so funny that they know it's coming. And sometimes I feel like he changes the angle. Like, like he kind of goes to the left and then reaches yes. the to the other side. But well, even he now, said he, even now to this day, because I watch all the games, obviously, you know, I got the TV set up, spread out, is when somebody does that, it doesn't matter what game, what announcer, it's immediate peanut punch. They say yes. he peanut punched that ball out. So that's obviously you know, he's a fringe, He's a fringe Hall of Fame guy. I know he's up for it here right now. And I just feel like just from that alone, he should get in because it is, he is, he, he is like known for that move. He revolutionized the game in a way by doing that. And players now emulate him for it to this day. Like you said, so yeah, uh, great to always had like that, on that one inch punch. Like Bruce Lee, you could get so yes. much power out of like yeah. just well, not a huge. And he took boxing lineup. lessons to get even better at it. Yeah, Peanut Tillman, otherworldly. You hope Jalen Johnson can become every bit the player Peanut Tillman is wearing his number every time he steps out on that football field. So okay, good start. Uh, without, uh, you know, like a, yeah. So like I said, I'm I'm a little nervous for Sunday. So that'll get us into our picks for this week. Let's look at the pickem, shall let's we? See if I'm climbing the chart, get my. Uh, my my thing off so we can Whoa. see Jake's stupid so look oh. so 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 we're, we're we're cutting it really close johnny had a little bit of a tough week last week we all kind of had a tough week last week but greg actually greg actually pulled out ahead of everybody with his picks last week nice job, so he's man. made up some ground 
Um, so yeah, can we start doing that? Can we start adding what how we did the last week underneath the overall? You could do the last yeah, week, yeah. Record well, I'll just, just uh, so I could brag. So I'll like, just like right other... now, I could brag that I did well, better. Well, by you saying that, you'll never get first again. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, pulled... let's make a note of it right. Now. I could try and pull it. I did think about that today, but yeah. So very very limited, uh, or not limited, but very slim uh, margins here. So anybody's game. Only week nine, but yeah, we relatively we've been pretty solid on our picks. I'd say I finally stuck and picked the Packers. I had to do it last night. Well, of course, that sucked. Wow. They, yeah. That team was decimated. Forty ers were decimated. Yeah, with injuries. So of course, so so last night across the board we took the Packers. Of course, uh, we all got the Houston Texans against Jags. Jags are I don't even know what quarterback they're starting. I know it ain't the giraffe. So some guy that has an L. His first name starts with an L. I think. Yeah, it's just some some random dude. So I, I'll take the take the Texans there. Uh, Giants at football team. Uh, Johnny and I taking the Giants. Greggy's got football team. I think the Giants Giants put put together a pretty good uh, effort last week. I think eventually they're going to put it together and and well, uh, get. And I uh, have uh, Terry McLaurin on my fantasy team, and he's going to go for five touchdowns this week. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Take uh, cross- the on that one. <laughs> yeah, across the board here, we got Baltimore beating the Colts. Uh, we got Vikings beating the Detroit Lions, and I think Matt Stafford has COVID, so I think that's an easy call. The I'm first time they he wrong. tested positive, it was a false. It was a wrong false positive. No, so this he's time actually he playing had, that game. I no, I'm saying in the summer. Oh. Remember, he yeah, couldn't oh, remember yeah. he couldn't report to the team initially because they thought he had COVID, but then he didn't. Now apparently he does have it. So it's crazy this how this week it seems to have hit so many different locker rooms, you know, yeah. and that it's the Bears. Well that We're rushing going. game is starting to get on all cylinders. So I think we'll we all feel comfortable with that about that one. Bears at Tennessee Titans. I am taking the Bears in this one. I wow. know it's kind of funny. Uh Greg Whoa. and Johnny taking wow. the Titans. I explain yourself, sir. Sure. Well, I just feel like this is one of those games. You saw what happened with the Titans when they got sick. And they came back and they put a beating on someone. Granted that they were also mocked throughout the league. It's a little different. But I do think what happened last week against the Saints, that game was the Bears game. They absolutely should have won that game. Um, the They did a pretty good job with this patchwork o, I, O-line. I know the O-line is really brutal. I think Alex Barr is the starting center. We get to see uh, Hambright, which is a fantastic name, at guard. Uh, it's going to be a real sloppy, but I think this is one of those games where this defense can take over and they can play one of those games that we were referencing the last time that they played in Tennessee and they can make all the difference in that game. So I am taking the bears. I think it's one of those weeks where you show who you are. And if you're going to make the playoffs, you, you have to pull out one of these three games. They've dropped two of them. They're taking this one. So I'm taking the bears. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm all like, hands on deck. I hope you're right. What? No. I I did say it wouldn't surprise me. I was going to bring this up in the interview, you know, that maybe just this shuffle of the deck and throwing all these different guys on the O line would make Nagy have to do a few different things. Exactly. And it, that's just the hopeful Bears fan, I think, in us, Jake. But it could happen. As it is the, the hopeful. As yes. The kid from Angels in the outfield once said, "We'll have to make that a gift on this show because I, I'm that it, it could happen kind of guy." And I'm right there with you, Jake. I. You know, I want to believe I'm driving seven hours down there, you know, not just to take pictures and get videos for all the fine folks tuning in for well, I, brags in the stands. I'd like to see a, I'd he's like to see a Bears win too. Here, I sent him a telegram. I said Greg is going to be down there, win it for win it for Greg, and I did not get a return telegram, but I, I, I hope that they got it. <laughs> so we're taking the. I'm taking the Bears. More more a uh, uh, rational minds, of course, are taking the Titans, but you know. I can I can afford a loss. I felt like being energetic for oh, I'm feeling King good this week. Jake, I'm feeling King good this week. King Jake is gonna dabble. He's just gonna yeah, dabble. I can afford to lose one. Bears. Okay. So go moving on. We all got the Chiefs, of course. When are you ever gonna pick against the Chiefs? Uh against exactly. against the Panthers. Seahawks across the board against the Bills. Uh I'm taking the Broncos in this one over Atlanta. Greg and Johnny taking the Falcons. Chargers across the board against the Raiders. Cardinals across the board against the Dolphins. Steelers across the board against the woeful Dallas Cowboys. Um, Greg and I have the Buccaneers 
up on the Saints. Johnny's got the Saints. I do believe Drew Brees is playing in this game. I know his shoulder and got Michael a little. Thomas. And he Michael Thomas. Sure. I know his shoulder got a little bangy bang last week. <laughs> so bang, we'll, bang, we'll see bang. how that goes. Um, and then, of course, Patriots across the board against the other woeful team, the Jets. Interesting. Interesting. Very very interesting. interesting. I did get a souvenir when I was in Kansas City, which I don't. You guys remember the Super Bowl when we were behind and the yes. famous wasp play? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Wasp. It says third down and whatever. Oh God, this you know, guy. Nice. Was <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, sure. third and whatever. It don't matter. They're still not in the stadium? No, no. It was no, like, just outside. Uh, yeah, one of the local shops. They do a lot of uh, – you know, people that make shirts, you know, like you guys, you know, they, they'll get their merch in the <laughs> local stores. And stuff. Hey, speaking of which, oh, check oh, out oh, this I merch I got. Look at this. Look at check, this. Out, check out this merch I got. Here, check it out. What does that say? It's we can't like, read it. Uh, look. Oh, okay. Midway they Minute. Got the Midway oh. Minute mug from our guy, Kevin Kadick. He sent me a nice package, gift package. Oh, and nice. uh yeah, so because I gotta enter my pick, and of course I'm taking the Titans, even though I'm driving down there to see the game, and uh he'll be releasing his his I mean, newsletter every right. Sunday. He's doing that so that the Bears prove him wrong. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna pick the Titans, and then they're gonna show me that I'm an idiot, and they're oh, gonna I guess so. happy. It's, well, especially now that they've lost a few games and reality started to hit me because I am a Kool-Aid drinking fan. Once they start rolling, I mean, the last time I picked them to win, I was like, no one's scoring on the Bears because they're the Bears, and then they got whooped. So that's when they start going in the right direction, that's when I start getting those vibes, but I just don't have them right now, unfortunately. So I, I'm left with having to just pick realistically, I guess is the way of putting it. And I hate that calling negative being realistic, but you know, it's just at the end of the day, you just got to come to grips with what this team is. And if they prove me wrong, I'll be happy. So maybe it is a little bit of a hedge, but I got to hold my integrity making these picks you know, in the midway minute, you know, and every Sunday before these games, you know, I'm going up against these, you know, expert analysts and I am no expert, Johnny B, you know, we see I'm in, I'm in third place here in this pickums. Yeah. I'm supposed to be some expert analyst on a newsletter. Are you crazy, Kevin? But I appreciate the mug. It's really cool too. Cause on the other side, look, it's got the, here, check it out. It says, good morning, friends. What's and I friend? like that. Yeah, he friends is the way he calls people friends. You know, oh, hello friends. It kind of you know, read like his friends logo too, like right. Like, and oh, when he oh, when you read his newsletter, that's kind of how he starts them. You know, as you know, hello that friends, is adorable. Yes, Kevin's the man. He does great work. So check out his newsletter, the Midway Minute. Uh, really great Chicago sports newsletter. But I have a great video that I wanted to share earlier in the show, but we had to get into such a. You know, fun interview with Dion Miller, but I want to share this because it was really funny. And you can hang out with jo- Johnny B and, and get the reaction because I wanted you and Jake to react to this. So here it Bears is. Bears Saints game. It's all these two whims and Chauncey Gardner Johnson. This is the first play. Nothing really happens there, but afterwards, Gardner looks at him and says, Sup, dude, I'm gonna pull your mouth guard right off your face mask. He says, Do it. I dare you. He says, Okay. Bam. Pulls it. Chucks in that that ref that ref just stumbling into shot didn't see a thing just old ref, just an old ref like whoa, 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 go mark the ball it's too old I think anyway mouth guard just on the ground by the huddle just chilling nice big old orange mouth guard you see it over there boom there it is hanging out then the Bears here it is right behind the QB right behind the running back. Chilling on the ground. No one sees it. No one paying attention to it. The Bears are trying to get themselves organized, figure things out. Almost steps on it. Okay. In motion. He almost steps on it. And then the ref is like, guys, 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 taking way too long. You've taken far too long. You're wasting our time. Now pushes them back right up to the mouth guard. Number 74 has got a line up right in front of it. He sees it. He's like, damn, get this thing out of here. He just chucks it. Goes for a little mouth guard flight way back. Hopefully they don't get pushed back to over there, and then they have to line up in front of it again. That'd be funny. He chucks it. Then they go on to, like, I don't know what they did. They had to punt. There was, inter- there was an interception. Changeover down. Blah, blah. The point is, a lot of time passes by, and Wims is on the sideline just get, just waiting, and here he is, finally. This is his next shot on the field with Gardner Johnson. He doesn't have a 
So at this point, Jake, because we have a couple more videos, it's a long video, and you know this is how I had to upload it here. What were your thoughts, you know, uh, with Whims, you know, leading up to that moment? Did you even think that it did? It, did you pick up any of that stuff? Because on the telecast, they did mention the mouth guard on the ground. At I one saw, point, I it think was Montgomery mentioned. throws it at one point. I, I remember seeing that, but I didn't know anything about the fight at all just when it happened javon jumped started dancing around like an idiot because i thought <laughs> he was not the instigator and we were about to get 15 yards in our favor but of course that was not the case so i don't know why he was dancing like a jackass did you think he, after he the fact seeing that whims had his mouth guard pulled did that make a little more sense to you or obviously because no. we're going to get into the next video so here it is johnny b we'll play the next two videos and then we'll get the final this reaction his next shot on the field with Gardner Johnson, he doesn't have a mouth guard, and he's just been thinking about it nonstop. Play doesn't come to him. He's not involved. Finally, it's over, and now he gets his chance. Hey, bam, bam. <gasps> okay, so at this point, <laughs> at this point, Gardner Johnson's like, what? <laughs> What's up, dude? And he's like, that's right. Uh, I pulled your mouth guard, and then I punched you. So it would have been real cool, in my opinion, if Wims just came up to him and did a little pop with the mouth guard, and that's all. And it was like, eye for an eye. I don't have one. You don't have one. But then, no, so then Wims says Gardner Johnson spit on him here, but there's just not enough time for all of that to transpire before the punch, which isn't even a punch because it's like an open-handed palm to the helmet. And uh, Gardner just takes it and then looks at him. I love that um, Wims... After he throws it, he does this, like, punch runaway. Like the nerdy kid trying to get the courage to go pick on the bully, throws a punch and runs away right away. So he starts to run away, and then he's like, oh, shit, wait, that didn't phase you at all? You don't care about that? I'm going to punch you again. Gardner sees that he's coming at him again, and Gardner's a professional pest, man. I mean, this is what they do. It's an impressive skill. He's like, I'll keep my hands by my side. You can punch me. You'll get suspended. I won't. I won. You lost. See what he does? He sees that he's coming at him again, doesn't defend himself, doesn't do anything, keeps his hands by his side, just takes it to the head, just casually turns his defend himself, doesn't do anything, keeps his hands by his side, just takes it to the head, just casually turns his head like, okay, dude, do you? You're going to get kicked out. I kind of won. So Wims does that, another palm, and then uh, Jenkins rides him to the ground. Old ref falls down to a knee. He's just, oh, my God, I didn't even notice this ref. That's kind of sad. Just kind of falls to the knee and then kind of, like, grabs 22 and rides him for a little bit. That's all sad. Anyway, Wims, he gets tackled to the ground by Jenkins. They fool around for a while. Then Wims stands up, and he starts clapping like he proves something. He's like, yeah. And he starts flexing a little bit. And his own teammates, number 74, is like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Get the fuck out of here. I want to touch your nasty mouth guard again. Leave. His own teammates, the Bears, are like, dude, leave. Like, you just embarrassed yourself and everyone. So Wims gets told to leave. He's like, you can't come back. We don't want you anymore. He gives his gloves to a lucky fan, and then that's the end of that. Oh, man. John Boy Media. That was a great, really well done. He does these breakdowns. You know, he's John Boy is a diehard Yankee fan. And uh, he does a lot of great MLB work and he does breakdowns of MLB brawls where everybody's out arguing on the field and kind of breaks down the nuance of how and why it's happening. And he narrates it in kind of that drunk history way and uh, really, really funny stuff. And I was hoping he would do one for this whole Javon Wims incident and he did not disappoint, you know, all the little intricacies of what this guy, the other guy was up to. And then, yeah, Wims is just losing his mind completely, you know. Uh, you know, wrong place, wrong time. He's, you know, this this cornerback that not only pulled the moth guard from Javon Wims, he's also the one that was given Tariq Cohen problems last year, calling him short. And then this guy apparently is the one Michael Thomas got in a fight with at practice. And there's video of him pulling mouth guards of other players uh, I've seen throughout the week. So this dude's an instigator probably deserves to get cracked in the face a few times or a helmet, you know, but uh, not the right time when it's a tie ball game or whatever it was. But yeah, uh, that was, that was the beginning of the third quarter when, when we, <laughs> Wasn't the third quarter? Yes. At that point. The game yeah. was still in the, the quarter, balance. Yeah, <laughs> we, they had just kicked a field goal, and 
We're trying to get some Wim, stuff in order. And, and, and like John Boy says, the way he points it out, what's great is because now we know, you know, you pull up the video and see that he had the mouth guard pulled. But the way John Boy shows it, Wims was off the field for a while. It Like, you'd think he'd come to his senses after a series or two. Like, all right, I've cooled down. Yeah, he ripped my mouth guard. And like John Boy points out, just rip his mouth guard and walk away. I, I, didn't, think he, I didn't think he actually got the mouth guard when he attempted to do it. But it looks like he did get the mouth guard. See, I initially so that would have been good he enough. he was trying to pull a chain. I thought he had a chain on. Yeah, like and I that. thought he was trying to snatch his chain off like a Dion thing. I don't know. But, yeah. uh. Yeah, shout out to John Boy because that was really, really, really funny stuff, and I really wanted to share it with the the viewers. And so there That's it is. Best part is the jump back, like you said. He does that little slap <laughs> and he jumps back, like you know, like Mike Tyson's gonna punch at him. You guys, you're like, what? Like, what? okay, yeah, he embarrassed himself pretty, pretty oh, bad. And then a Fetty, get the, get the fuck, get out of here. I don't want to throw your nasty uh, mouth guard. Cause that's the other funny part is why well, this, the distance, all the different places, this mouth guard ended up. And that, like I said, if you run it back on the tape, they mentioned it during the telecast. Or I think uh, Joe Buck or whoever, whoever was doing the call was like, uh, there's a mouth guard on the field. And uh, so, yeah, it's just really funny, uh, really funny stuff there from John boy, but not so funny from Javon Wims who had his two game suspension upheld when he tried to appeal it. So apparently the NFL is, yeah, that's I mean, I feel like he threw those punches because he was embarrassed, right? Or something because the guy didn't do anything. And especially uh, after you hit him one time, he doesn't do anything. Well, now no, he pulled his mouth guard out of his mouth. Now we gotta get in a fight. He's talking all of a sudden. This guy's a smack talker. He pulled the mouth guard out. He's just like, like John Boy said, he's just a pest. He's good at it. And he yeah. got Javon Wims to blow up. And Javon Wims is a tough guy. You whoop your ass. And that's what Javon was trying to portray. That's what he was trying to convey to Gardner Jones or whatever his name is. But uh, wrong place, wrong time. Wait. And this is the other thing, and Johnny can attest to this because he's on. I've I see his guys on the sidelines. They'll find little things. I went to the Bears Chiefs game and sat right near their their uh, their sidelines of the Chiefs bench, and you could see how competitive those guys are. Just the wide receiver yeah. group hanging out around each other. The difference between a good team and a bad team is Javon Wims would no, on a good team would be waiting to make a play to show that dude up shake him out of his shoes or, you know, on the next run play, blow him up on a block. Instead, Javon Wims got to, you know, you know, lower himself to getting in a, you know, child child's play kids fight, you know, where you're smacking helmets and getting suspended two games for it because he can't, you know, make the big play to show him up in that way, which is the ultimate way to show a guy up, you know, on a, on a playing, you know, whatever field, basketball, football field, anything, you know? So, you know, it's it's disappointing because right now, you know, uh, this is your time to make a chance and make an opportunity for yourself. And now Riley Ridley is going to get that opportunity. So we'll see how it all shakes out. These guys have been here for a few years, but, uh, you know, at least John Boy can make it funny for us at the very least. Okay. So, uh, you know, we're about to jet here. I got to get to bed. I'm leaving at like four in the morning. I'm going to uh, last time I went to Nashville, I took Jenny. To I took Jenny and our friends Kyle and Ashley, and we drove down there at like three in the morning because it's a one straight shot to Nashville from where I live in Northwest Indiana, the region. And it's I 65 takes you right through, you know, Indianapolis, two hours to Indianapolis, two hours to Louisville, or you know, and then two hours to Nashville. It's all, you know, real, real easy drive. So I like to leave bright and early, beat the traffic. There's nobody on the highway at that time and you can pretty much get all the way there. So that's what I'm going to do tonight or uh, tomorrow morning, I should say. But I did want to share this along because our guy here, Mike Schaefer, as you see on the right, he's got this Nagy Nation uh, logo. But he's actually this picture is actually from We Are the Fans. If you remember the old documentary series from ESPN where they highlighted a section in Soldier Field and they were called We Are the Fans. It was a documentary about fans in the NFL. It was done a few years ago and it was a really good series. And Mike Schaefer was a part of that. And here is a picture of Mike Schaefer uh, wearing a cool Southlaw shirt and it, and the mask. I don't know if you see, notice, recognize the mask, but Matt Nagy was wearing this very mask on the sideline 
and I bought two of these the other day. I wanted to give Mike Schaefer a shout out because these masks are super sweet. And I've been watching the Those games cool. here. Yeah, the last few weeks. I mean, they're you know they're not the official like you know mask you gotta wear you know for you know COVID prevention, but they're like gaiters, so you wear it over your mask that nobody likes to have shown. But I love these, and every time I've been watching uh the games i'm like where do i get these so here's the long the long uh the long dot com i thought i'd share it along because my Ooh. mike uh mike put, yeah it's teesprings or whatever just the beginning if you look it up but uh yeah they're really sweet and i told him i'd give him a shout out tonight because he was trying to quick deliver it to me so i could wear it to the game on sunday <laughs> so we put that whole url in this banner, like I so know. Very, oh, I should have football dash collection <laughs> slash products <laughs> slash Chicago. I'm sorry, I just Bears. copy and pasted it. Just go to Deep Dish <laughs> Tees. I'm trying to give our guy a shout out. Yeah, you know, we w. we sell our own, uh, you know, uh, stuff here, but you know, we're not you're not opposed to giving you know guys a shout out. And Mike Shaver's doing some cool stuff over there, doing those cool face masks, and he sent. The, ma- the face mask personally to Matt Nagy at House Hall, and then there he is wearing it on the sidelines of the Bears-Saints game. So I want one. Like so I, not only did I want one, I bought two. So get yourself one, and, uh, and there you up, go. Because it's important. Yeah, the game is Sunday, Sandlin says, so why am I leaving? Or why, why, are, why am I leaving so early? Because, Sandlin, uh, Saturday morning, we're going to leave at 3, 4 a.m., and uh, I'm going to go to a family member's house that lives near Nashville. I'm going to spend a little time with some family, hang out, and I uh, got tested, so I'm all clean, and, and I'm going to uh, go enjoy a nice meal and, and and then go to the Bears game. I'm not doing anything else. It's strictly business, football. I'm going to see my only game of 2020 since March 10th of <laughs> the beginning of this nightmare of 2020, so you know, this is my one chance to see a game this year. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to a Purdue basketball game, which is the other thing I've been enjoying doing lately. So, you know, just as someone that enjoys going to the games, you know this, Jake, you know this, Johnny. You got to go on Sunday. I'm really, really excited for Sunday. And uh, I hope all you guys tune in Sunday. We're going to do some fun coverage. We're going to have a pregame show. We're going to have, uh, you know, maybe do a halftime thing. We're going to do a post game show if we can. I'll be on the road. We'll see what we can get done, but you know, I'm going to bring you a lot of fun coverage, try to get you as many cool shots as I can, video pictures and otherwise. So we'll Bragg's see. We... Finally in the stands. Bragg's in the stands. Finally in the stands. Finally. We're finally doing it. I'm very grateful. I do not take it for granted one bit. I know that, you know, there's people, there's bigger issues than going to games you know, on the line. But if I could get to one, I said I'd go, and here I am. I'm going. So here you I are. am. I'm very excited. <laughs> you know, with the Bears having all these COVID things, I was like holding my breath that the game wasn't even going to happen. And selfishly, I am happy that they are all systems go. They practice today, so we Where should. Where are you sitting so we can look for you? Uh, I don't know. You know, it's a big stadium. I've never been there before, but it's upper tank. So, uh, you know, I paid 170 a piece for him from a, a Titans <laughs> fan on Twitter. So, uh, you know, like you said with your, I'm sure it's going to be the same kind of protocol. Greggy, Greggy sneak around. Isn't going to be doing any of that at the Nashville game. I'm going to have to stay in my spot. Oh, man, and just be appreciative that I get to see the game live, which I will be. So hope you join us. Like I said, for all the fun coverage and one you quick can- thing, I have an announcement that you guys don't know about. All right. I am working on something pretty cool for the next duck race. I filmed the duck race, Chicago Bears Legends race number two. And I got to tell you, it's an epic race. However, I'm working on something to go along with it, a prize, and it's going to be a pretty major prize. I don't have the confirmation on the prize just yet. I can tell you it's Chicago Bears related. You know, Our last prizes were Chicago sports, you know, Jumpman 23 related. And I'm hoping to have that information before next week's show. So stay well, tuned. Well, that's excellent. Mm-hmm. Well, before Teaser. I wrap it up, Johnny B, you know, when 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 you wrap up your segment, you always wrap it up in such a you know amazing, perfect, oh. you know, uh, precise way. You. You're way better than I am at this because I am like a, the the ultimate run on sentence that one day might kill Jacob over here in the oh, middle. Okay. So 
you, I'm going to let you wrap up as you always do. You're Johnny B for three segments. All right, guys, NFL season about halfway through. A lot of the teams have already played the eight games, but with the buys, some of them have played seven and then COVID and buys and this and that. But remember, money won is far sweeter than money earned. This is Johnny B-side. I'll see you on the flip side. Let's go. Let's go on our way to the show. Headed to Nashville, Jacoby. Play that funky music. Give me some nice music. We're wrapping this baby up, putting a bow on it. Hour and a half. And we nailed it all night long. Uh, we want to <laughs> thank all. We want to thank all. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just talking here. Uh, I want to thank everybody in the chat for hanging out. Chad Vincent, congrats on your uh, winning the giveaway from Johnny B. Send a th- thank you along with Johnny B. Uh, Chris Danlin, thank you for hanging out with uh, with us here all day long from the Tape Never Lies Network and uh, Grant Sims, Evan Wells, all you guys, you know, hanging out all night long. Brandon, Ron Rupp now, you know, for you guys to be here all night long listening to us makes the show better, you know, keeping it interactive. And we can't thank you enough for your support. So uh, thank you and a shout out to you first and foremost. And, of course, shout out to Dion Miller. From ABC7 Chicago. Awesome He's always done such amazing work for all the Chicago sports teams. And specifically the Chicago Bears working hard, trying to fight through this crazy 2020, covering this team as best she can. Yeah, she does, an, for Greg. does an amazing job. So we definitely will be bringing Dion Miller back here very soon to Braggs in the stand. So shout out to Dion and uh shout out to you, John Jake. Uh thank you yeah. for all your hard work. You're always uh you're always keeping me keeping me honest with my run on sentence shout out. I don't want to end the you know if the music ends then I'm screwed. Yeah, and of course, seconds. And of course shout out to Johnny B. There's our guy Johnny B. Shout out to Johnny B. Always working hard, doing his thing for Johnny B for three. This is Braggs in the Stands. Make sure you tune in Sunday. We're going to be doing a ton of fun coverage. I could not be more excited to get down there. And uh, just follow me on on Twitter. You know I'm always going to be there, you know, bringing you all the fun coverage. So that'll do it for tonight. Thanks for joining us. This is Braggs in the Stands. Friday night special. Can't wait for Sunday. Let's get a dub. Always. There it is. Let's go. On the road.